I think one of the things that brought me to these ideas was actually something which has now become impossible, which was physical travel. And we're, for the first time in my life, meeting with and working with people um, in the Indian subcontinent and realizing that the conceptual language that they were speaking was both inherited from the global north and an entirely Eurocentric, um, with a very Eurocentric history, but also was one which fits in many ways very poorly with the particular experiences of those people's lives, those people's situations, and talking to others about it, of course, um, you then come across a number of other conversations that are going on, but, uh, and one of those conversations was what was one that I had with Sue. So, um, you know, for, for quite a while, I've been thinking about um, the coloniality of knowledge production and, and how to make the global south matter epistemically. Um, and over the years, I've come to um, the conclusion that although there are very important interventions about thinking about shifting the levers of knowledge production to the global south, primarily through um, theorizing from the global south and producing theories from the global south, but actually the problem doesn't lie so much at the level of theories, uh, because that simply reflects uh, what there is and the patterns that exist and so on, but actually at the level of concepts. They simply are not uh, the concepts in place in order to visualize and describe different forms of world making across the globe. A major starting point for the conference uh, and thinking about uh, the conference was um, how to disrupt the coloniality of knowledge production without reproducing the power of the object of critique itself, right? And in some ways that meant, taking that quite seriously meant that one couldn't simply rest at uh, producing critique uh, alone, but had to move, if you like, or contend quite seriously with the question of after critique, right? What comes after critique? What is the kind of knowledges that need to be put in place once you've done uh, that work of disrupting that coloniality of knowledge production? And so uh, that is why the conference is very much focused on knowledge production, um, focused on uh, producing concepts from the global south, uh, and um, why concepts? Because as I was saying earlier, because we don't simply have the concepts in place that are situated, uh, that are uh, historically uh, informed, politically specific, able to capture that complexity uh, of, um, you know, of, of, of different ways of being in the world. Critique um, of the coloniality of knowledge production needs to look very seriously at the unequal production um, and acknowledgement of intellectual labor uh, and structures of institutional authority around the globe. Yeah, I think probably both of us have been, the world that both of us have been educated in is simply inadequate to encounter other parts of the globe, most particularly the global south. I mean, it's a conceptual language that we know it has particular history, it's drawn from the European Enlightenment of the 17th and 18th century, uh, which has, of course, as many people, other people have pointed out, have got all kinds of problems about it. But I think what I came to see, and I think what Jimmy came to see as well, is the authority of that worldview um, that had been so, in many cases, so easily assumed to be a universal relevant and legitimate. And I think it was that which, which made us talk about, or made us, start, made, made us define um, the title of the conference as much of urgency. We hope that these, through these concepts, uh, you know, that the, um, that there will be a shift in what is taught in the curriculums, right? That these are the concepts that will take, uh, you know, that will that will take center stage, you know, that they'll find their way into curriculars, into, um, you know, into what people teach in the classrooms and so on and so forth. And, and through that, there would be some shift in the 
ways in the kind of epistemic difference that knowledge production of the from the global south actually makes right because it's not simply the production of knowledge which is located in the global south but that it needs to also make that epistemic difference right. and actually in organizing the conference as well we were very much concerned with opening up the conference to people from what i think we might describe as the margins people without necessarily the most senior posts in academia in academia, but at the most prestigious um, institutions of the global south. And, and it's the knowledge that these people and uh, in these situations are putting forward that I think seems to both of us to be part of the knowledge which has to be put forward and made into all the kinds of new templates uh, for future ideas about the world or about its policies, about its politics. It isn't any longer simply reproducing what the most powerful people know already. Yeah. Uh, going forth into the workshop, one of the most exciting um, aspects uh, of the two days uh, that lie ahead are that we have colleagues who are presenting work, uh, conceptual work, uh, you know, which is embedded in different languages, uh, and in particular, very excited about uh, the presentation uh, in Quechua.